Today's episode of Urbex is Field and Stream. This is a company that was started back in 2013. They're from the Pittsburgh area. You might have seen Wally B's video recently on the original, very first location of the Field and Stream where it just sort of up and closed and he was all confused as to why it would have closed because it was always busy. Every field and stream that I've ever seen has always been busy. And so I did a little bit of research and what I came up with is they're owned by Dick's Sporting Goods, I guess. And Dick's Sporting Goods is trying to get out of the firearms business and they're going to be, I, I'm assuming they're gonna close all the field and streams and revamp them and redo them and they're gonna change the name to something else. So that's why we're here to take a look at Field and Stream because I think this store is going to disappear rather soon and become something completely different. So if you wanna check out Field and Stream, all you have to do is follow me. I always loved the look of this store. And if you don't have a Field and Stream near you or you're not familiar with Field and Stream, it's like a Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's. But their sign for this place is massive. That is huge. I love how they have these big lights here with all the birds on it. That is awesome. Wow. Look at these door handles too. I know this says do not enter, but I wanted to see. These door handles are awesome. They're huge. Oh, here's a good look at the door handles. Again, split. Wait, wait, wait. Open sesame. Wow. Are you enjoying the nice fire? No. <laughs> yeah, but nothing. Yeah, this place looks exactly like a Cabela's. Kind of on a smaller scale, though. Here, I wanted to come check out their animal display because just like Cabela's, they have a display of animals. And I think each of their stores is slightly different from one another. Look at that moose, wow. That is huge. I've seen one of those for real and they are pretty terrifying when you're out in the middle of literally nowhere, Michigan, and you come across one of those. It's terrifying. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> because it's totally Thanksgiving in April. <laughs> wow. They have a ton of outdoor sports-related clothing. So if you're into outdoor things and you want to get some, some good clothes, here you go. This is in the women's section. So this is the hunting section and you can see the ammo and gun shop back there. And that's what um, the Dick's Sporting Goods Corporation wants to get out of and not do anymore. I'm not quite sure why though. Let's head on over into the camping and fishing section. That's a little bit more my, you know, I guess I'm an outdoor person, but I don't really do a lot of outdoor activities if that makes any sense. I do a lot of hiking and exploring but not so much the rest of it i would love to go boating canoeing and all of that but it's expensive here we have the kayaks at 250 dollars what's that is that for eggs or is it for oh yeah eggs i was thinking maybe golf why? balls yeah why can't you just leave them in the egg carton no 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 no. why would you find an egg holder in a sporting goods store because you want to bring eggs with you to cook them on when you're camping Oh, Duh. <laughs> it's camping. Don't you just leave them in the Ooh, these are cool. Ooh, camp. look at this, the fans. Those are cool with the little sprayers. Now this is camping gear. Look camping. At this. Yeah. Those are the handles they fold up. That's cool. It's a spatula, a spoon and a These are the things that Vivian always says to put out in your bug out bag. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, go watch Vivian Tries on YouTube and then you'll understand. These are like those instant meal things that she, whoops, <laughs> that she talks about. And she's like, ah, oh, they're so good. Not this brand specifically, but just in general. What do you do with them? They're like 
it's like a food reactive thing where you open this packet or something inside and you stick it in and it cooks itself. You don't need a microwave or fire or anything. See? You open it, you remove all the contents, you insert the food pouch into O'Meal's bag, add three to five ounces of any type of water, and then the heat, and oh, and then there's a heating pad in it. Right. It's like the uh, um, MRE or whatever they call them for the military. I don't know. No. <laughs> Old lady scores. She caught it. That's okay. I already bonked this thing off. I don't know where it's supposed to go. I would love to try. Wait, that's upside down. Yeah, I know. I would love to try one of those. Oh, you it's supposed like to go oatmeal. on. They put the tag in upside down. I just realized that. Oh, no, wait. They have them. They should go this way so that they don't fall off. But they have them on there this way. But whatever. And they, what did you just say? I said people in California should have those emergency food supplies for when their state cracks apart. Oh. <laughs> from the earthquake. Oh. Since I was looking at come. I was looking at these. These are cool. Like the whole emergency food kits. Wow. What's in so here, let's take a look. This is the fishing section, the tackle shop. And you have aisle after aisle of all your fishing gear and all your rods and reels. And over near the tackle shop, they even have deer way up by the ceiling. At the checkouts, they have a flag that says America the Beautiful. That's cool. Here we are at the Field and Stream. Oh, wait, Sportsman's Warehouse. Well, this was a field and stream the other day when I came by here. Well, since we're here, let's go check out the Sportsman's Warehouse and see what's changed. So I believe this is what all of the field and streams are going to become. But um, upon walking into this place, I noticed they still have the guns and ammo section, which wasn't the whole point of changing the name and the format of the store to get rid of the guns and ammo. At least that's what I read. I don't know. I'm so confused. And this really looks identical to Field and Stream. There's like no changes other than the name. Maybe they just haven't gotten around to reformatting the inside of the store. I don't know. That was a look at the field and stream here at the Austin Landing here in between Dayton and Cincinnati, more specifically in uh, Springboro, Ohio. This is what I scored. I'm going to try one of these out because Vivian Tries talks about these all the time. Um, and, you know, we're going to see how this comes out. Maybe I'll do a video on it or include it in this video. If I did include it in this video, then you already know whether I tried it and whether I liked it and how it turned out. But uh, anyways, thanks for joining me here on this episode. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on another episode of Urbex. Bye, everyone.